All right, so in this unit, we're going to need to discuss the physical changes. And so we should first differentiate between chemical changes and physical changes again. Right, chemical changes alter the atomic arrangement or atomic composition. All right, um, a lot of times chemical bonds are broken or formed. All right, um, physical changes do not alter the composition. Do not alter the atomic arrangement or the atomic composition. A lot of times physical changes will involve uh, changes to the phase. For instance, um, a chemical change in wa or involving water would be the combustion of hydrogen with oxygen to form water. After we balance that, we can see that hydrogen molecule those bonds between those two hydrogen atoms have broken. Same thing with the double bond between the two oxygens. And new oxygen-hydrogen bonds have formed there. Uh, these, these atoms have rearranged, and of course that's a chemical change. Whereas, let's say we're going home, we need to cook uh, dinner. We're going to boil some water to cook pasta or rice. Of course, that's just going to involve a change. Say water in the liquid phase, we'd still write an arrow to indicate that it's changed, even though it's not a chemical change, to turning water into the gas phase. And so as you can see, hydrogen is still connected to water in both scenarios, but it's just in different physical states. And so it is a physical change and not a chemical one. In both scenarios, a chemical or a physical change, energy is going to be transferred uh, and so we'll still need to talk about um, energy when we talk about physical changes. So let's talk a little bit more about the different states of matter. Alright, so we, of course we've got uh, solids, liquids, and gases which when we uh, show those abbreviations we would uh, use S for solids L for liquids and G for gases of course solids have a defined shape and volume Gases, excuse me, liquids, have a defined volume, but don't have a defined shape. They take the shape of their container. So if you were to pour this liquid into this container, it would take the shape of this container, have the same volume. And of course, uh, gases don't have a defined shape or volume. They would take the shape of their container that they are in. And so we'd have to put a stopper on there and the gases would take the entire volume of the container. So they do not have a defined volume or shape.
And, if, and of course we can change phases. We can go from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas and each of these phase changes have a specific name. Of course, when a solid goes to a uh, liquid, uh, we say it is melting. When a liquid turns into a solid, we of course know that we call it freezing. It freezes. When a liquid turns into a gas, converts uh, from a liquid to a gas phase, of course we call that boiling at the boiling point, or it could also called vaporization. If it is not at the uh, boiling point, we'll talk more about that. When a gas uh, changes to a liquid, that is condensing. And then if we skip the liquid phase, if we go from the solid phase to the gas phase, that is called sublimation. Or subliming, the substance is subliming. CO2 is the sort of go-to example for that. We call solid carbon dioxide dry ice because at atmospheric pressure, it goes from the solid phase directly to the gas phase does not sort of melt into a liquid. And then of course, under various conditions, uh, substances can go directly from the gas phase to the solid phase, and that is called de deposition.